Shabbat Shalom. I just want to welcome everyone to the Sabbath Day Conference Call. And this is Barbara, and I'm serving as your host today. And Brother Pete is here as your co-host. Welcome aboard. And we just want to invite everyone to get more information to go to our website, LunarSabbathDay.com. But today, uh, the title is The Great Cover-Up by the SBA Church. And the Adventist Church has known the truth about the Lunar Sabbath since 1938, and it's been hidden, which is very sad to me because I'm a fourth-generation Seventh-day Adventist daughter. I have uncles that are missionaries, and I just hope that you will let others know about this truth. How long has the leadership known that Saturday is not the Sabbath? Well, if the Sabbath on the biblical calendar does not fall on Saturday, why does the Seventh-day Adventist Church still teach that Saturday is the Sabbath? Why has the leadership not informed the church members? SDA Church Hiding the Truth The history of the Lunar Sabbath within the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the sad story of a cover-up spanning decades Heaven has tried many times to bring this truth to the world, but each time spiritual pride or fear of the consequences of accepting such a radically different truth has led the church to reject it and still more to cover up the evidences for this truth. The 1995 Committee to Study the Calendar well, that wasn't that long ago, only 27 years ago, it was studied again. And this uh, is the ancient Hebrew lunar solar calendar study. In the mid-1990s, questions arising out of California and Washington regarding the concept of lunar solar, uh, lunar Sabbath, promoted the general conference of the Seventh-day Adventists, that's called, that's the GC from here forth, to take action. In 1995, an order originating from the office of the then GC president, Robert Falkenberg Sr., commissioned a study group to look into the issue of calculating the Sabbath by the ancient Hebrew lunar solar calendar. The committee members consisted of five scholars, <clears throat> handpicked <clears throat> from the seminary at Andrews University. In addition to these five, there were also representatives from the Ministerial Department of the North American Division, referred to as NAD, of the Seventh Day. Robert uh, Falkenberg, Sr., former GC present, President, two Adventists, and another representative from the Ministerial Department of the General Conference. Well, the vaults were thrown open for the committee and they were asked to research the Grace Amadon collection, and that was housed at the Center for Adventist Research at Andrews University, as well as the four-volume series, The Prophetic Faith of Our Fathers, by Leroy Edwin Froome, and additional material supplied the committee for study was a series of letters written by well-respected Adventist scholar M. L. Andreessen. A research paper on the subject of Elder J.H. Wirtz was to be provided, but before it could, something unexpected happened. Many of the committee members became convicted of its truth, and this is in 1995. Uh, it had been expected that the committee would be able to very quickly refute the idea of a lunar Sabbath. What was not expected was what actually happened. As the committee members began studying into the subject, a number of them became convicted of its truth. And this is a uh, part of this study was about the 2300 day year prophecy. Uh, well, the entire Seventh-day Adventist denomination was founded upon a belief that the 2300 day year prophecy of Daniel 8:14 ended in October 22, 1844, as taught by the Millerite movement of the 1840s. And this is significant because the only way to arrive at that date is by using the ancient biblical lunar solar calendar. 
The lunar solar calendar was used to calculate the Day of Atonement. Without the original lunar solar calendar, there would be no Day of Atonement on October 22nd in 1944. This ancient method of time measurement was the very foundation for determining the time prophecy and the cleansing of the sanctuary doctrine, which is the hallmark belief of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, which grew out of the Miller De Millerite movement. And we can see on the two calendars below, we see on the right, we see that the, uh, the Day of Atonement is on a, well, is on the first day of the week. And this happened in 1844. It was Day of Atonement. And if you have went to Adventist academies and colleges like I have all my life, you know this date by heart, October 22nd, 1844, Day of Atonement. And it was the day of the great disappointment for the Millerite movement when they expected uh, Yeshua to come back. Well, the seventh month movement, the Millerites knew that the ancient lunar solar calendar so well that they were able to calculate in advance Day of Atonement. Without this understanding, there would have been no seventh month movement, no midnight cry, and later no cleansing of the sanctuary doctrine within Adventism. It is not too strong a statement to say that without the lunar solar calendar, there would be no 2300 day doctrine within the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And it is something that they were called the Seventh Month Movement, which is uh, the feast day. Day of Atonement is a feast day, and uh, the Millerites started out with a feast. And, uh, okay, go ahead, brother. Yes. The problem is when the Sabbath is calculated by the original biblical calendar, it does not fall on the Saturday because the weekly cycle of the lunar solar calendar does not align with the weekly cycle of the Gregorian calendar, which is a solar-only calendar. Furthermore, this can be proven by the fact that if the 2300-day year time period starting in 457 B.C., as taught by both the Millerite and the SDA church, the year A.D. 31 is pinpointed as the year of the crucifixion. When the lunar solar calendar for A.D. 31 is overlaid, the Julian calendar of the same year, Passover, the sixth day of the week, does not fall on a Friday. Well, when interviewed, one of the committee members stated, this is in quotes, the main thing the NAD men wanted to cover up was the fact that October 22nd is based on Jewish lunar cal calculation. And he said that they were wanting to get people to thinking that it was based on a solar calendation. And this led to extremely heated discussions among the committee members. And I am going to leave this whole document, the link to the whole document. You can go read it uh, for yourself. And, of course, all these quotes, too. A committee member recalled some of the discussion that took place over the issue, stating emphatically, anytime you have October 22nd and it is your hallmark doctrine, it is the hallmark doctrine that sets your denomination apart as distinct and separate from all other denominations and it is based on a Jewish lunar calculation. And then you give people the idea that you got it from the solar calendar? Well, you would be lying. Several of us were very, very hard on them. The 1995 study committee was shut down. The church officials who appointed the committee in their ignorance of the topic actually thought that the study committee would refute the lunar Sabbath. In their ignorance, this is a quote, in their ignorance, they actually thought they had a committee that would rubber stamp whatever they were told to agree to. But after a few meetings, they saw that they couldn't get a consensus from us, and they couldn't bully us, and they shut it down. They saw that they were about to open Pandora's box, so they shut it down. Now we're going to go in the evidence from the 1938 committee to study the calendar. 
The 1938 committee studied the crucifixion date and found a problem. On November 7, 1938, a committee was formed to study the subject. And it is important to note that from the first, the focus covered the true day for Day of Atonement, 1844, and the correct day for the crucifixion. The two are inseparably entwined because when the principles of lunar solar calendation used to determine the Day of Atonement for 1844 were applied to the year of crucifixion, it is undeniably that there is a problem. The 1938 committee was initially called the Adventist Research Committee. It consisted of Adventist luminaries, well respected for their theological knowledge. Dr. Leroy Froome was elected to chair the meeting. Dr. Lynn Harper Wood served as secretary. The other members were Dr. M. L. Andreessen, professor. M. E. Kern, professor. W. Homer Teasdale, professor. Albert Wehrlein and Elder S. C. Gilbert. These were the experts. And after the initial report, a new member was added to the committee, and that's Miss Grace Amadon, because she has studied the astronomical aspects of these dates for a number of years. And the research did explaining the research they did explaining precisely how the Millerites arrived at October 22 for Day of Atonement, as well as the broad outlines of lunar solar calendation is very good and provides a solid foundation for understanding these issues. However, when they attempted to fit the Passover crucifixion on AB 14, Abib 14 of the biblical calendar to Friday on a Julian calendar, they ran into irre irreconcilable facts. Here is a sample, on the left here, here's a sample fact, easily established by history, that the Julian calendar in the time of Yeshua at an eight-day week, designated by the, day, by the num letters <laughs> A through H, this fragment of an early Julian calendar called the Fasti Pranestini, I guess, was constructed in AD 4 through 10. To the left, is a list of 10 days spanning parts of two weeks. You see at the top and going down, GH, that's the end of the prior week, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Okay, but that was not the only problem. If one assumes that the modern week has come down uninterrupted from creation, then by counting in a continuous week back week backwards, one would be able to align Abib 14 with the Friday in the year of crucifixion. Uh, AD 31 is understood by the SDAs from the prophecies of Daniel. However, when you count it backwards all the way, uh, however, when that was done, you arrived at a Wednesday and at the very latest a Thursday for Abib 14, the Passover crucifixion. And you cannot place a bib 14 on a Friday in AD 31, as we were all taught that Yeshua died on a Friday. Also, here's another quote from Great Controversy, page 399. The crucifixion occurred on the Passover, the sixth day of the week, and the 14th day of the lunar month. Well, we know the calendar I just showed you there um, is, was not the calendar of that time. It was, they just placed it back to there, counted all the way back, and they came up with a Wednesday. But at this time, the Julian calendar at the time of Yeshua had an eight-day week, as Brother Pete just explained, and it was designated by the days A through H. There were no weekdays named Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. None of those weekdays were existed at the time of the crucifixion. As the research committee focused on the crucifixion date, they, quick, they quickly and clearly saw the full ramifications of what they were dealing with. 
It was of utmost importance for them to be able to establish a crucifixion date in A.D. 31. However, in order to do this and still keep a Saturday Sabbath, certain principles of lunar, lunar solar calendation had to be skewed. Well, the truth is that the biblical week does not have a continuous weekly cycle and certainly does not align with the modern weekly cycle. So from the papers reserved in the Amadan collection, it appears that the research committee discussed the implications of presenting the church with the truth of the biblical calendar. And I wish they would have, I just have to say, for generations we would have already been observing the lunar solar calendar and the Sabbath and the correct calendar. But anyways, uh, that's not how it went. In an undated letter to Grace Amadon, M. L. Andreessen outlined the difficulties that must be expected if they should report the truth. The biblical week does not, they would find this out, that the biblical week does not have a continuous weekly cycle and certainly does not align with the modern weekly cycle. M. L. Anderson was one of the Seventh-day Adventist Church's most prominent theologians during the 1930s. And M. L. Anderson wrote in his letter to Grace Amadon, quote, It would not be easy to explain to the people that the God who advocated and instituted such an arrangement would be very concerned about the exact seventh day. If an explanation were possible and the people were at last adjusted to the shift in the feast day and the stability of the seventh day, it might be supposed that in time they would get used to the arrangement, but they would no sooner become accustomed to this till another shift is made. Now they shift back to where they were before. There is no uniformity, and just as the people get used to a certain arrangement, the day is changed again. Such is more than the common people can understand. Not necessarily the truth, but they, they can understand. And if we go to the people now with such a proposition, we must expect that confusion will result, and our enemies will not be slow to point out the difficulties and ring the changes on them. Because the biblical weekly cycle starts with every new moon, the biblical Sabbath appears to float through the modern Gregorian week, sometimes being on a Monday, the next month on Tuesday, the month after on Thursday, etc. This is the cons constant shift to which Andreessen is referring in his statements. An important point is that it's not the lunar, sol the lunar calendar that drifts across the Gregorian calendar, which we'd see represented on the right-hand side. That is a Julian calendar showing the lunar solar Sabbaths uh, as they shift from one, new, one moon um, in the prior month, which would be June, and then in July, shifting uh, to, well, Wednesdays uh, on the Gregorian calendar. Um, it is the Gregorian calendar that is shifting with respect to the lunar solar calendar. And we see that on the left. We're looking at the lunar solar calendar, and we note that it is the rock solid. It's attached to the physically visible moon. And yet the Gregorian dates you can see in the smaller print, you can see the Gregorian dates are floating around on that calendar. Uh, and Dreesen's point is he's looking as, the, as if the Gregorian calendar is somehow written in stone somewhere. The Gregorian calendar is a calendar developed by man uh, and the Julian the predecessor to it. So it's all a matter of which he assumes to be the concrete. Is it the biblical calendar, the biblically established one, or the man-established one that he uses for bedrock? Well, Andreasen argued that the truth should be suppressed. And in the end, the difficulties of presenting a new calendar by which to calculate the Seventh-day Sabbath seemed overwhelming. Andreasen urged that the resulting confusion would be only detrimental to the church, and for that reason, it should not be pursued. Andreasen argued that average Adventists would not be able to understand it. 
which is not true. A child can go out and look at the moon and know what phase we're in, what week we're in, by the shape of that moon. Andreessen state continued in his letter, or stated in his letter, if in the new calendar scheme we are considering adopting, it should be admitted that the lo local communities have the right to make their own observations that would determine the new year. It would yet remain a question if the proper men competent for such observations would be available. Let not the people observing God's holy day sponsor a calendar that means confusion and make our work unnecessarily hard. For while the proposed screen scheme does not in any way affect the succession of the days of the week and hence does not affect the Sabbath, Nevertheless, if the people observing the Sabbath also advocates a new scheme of calendation, the resulting confusion will not be of any help to us. Anderson, Anderson continues, while the whole matter would ultimately become adjusted, become adjusted, it would certainly make for confusion. Seven-day Adventists will soon have enough matters on their hands so that it will not be necessary to make trouble for ourselves before the time. The blank day may yet confront us. We cannot afford to start trouble of our own. In the world, it will look that the present proposed calendar is advanced for a specific purpose, not for the purpose of ad adoption. Some of his letters are so damaging that the SDA church has still not released them to the general public. Andreasen rejected the biblical calendar. It is not speculation to state that Andreasen rejected the biblical calendar through fear of the consequences. He stated as much himself. The, the committee has done most excellent piece of work. The endorsing unreservedly of the plan now before us seems to me appears in its implications so loaded with dynamite with TNT that we might well be we might well beware. I would most earnestly warn the committee in this matter. I am afraid that the repercussions of such endorsement at this time will be felt in wide circles. This is not intellectual honesty. This is intellectual cowardice. The truth remains the same regardless of the reaction against it. Andreasen was most eloquent in his arguments in favor of staying silent about the effect the biblical calendar has on the weekly Seventh-day Sabbath. He wrote a number of letters in which he urged the Adventist Research Committee of 1938 to remain silent on the subject and to leave the practice of Saturday Sabbath keeping, to leave that practice of Saturday Sabbath keeping while knowing full well it is inconsistent with the true biblical Sabbath. So the Seventh-day Adventist Church has taken a stand against the Lunar Sabbath, and they still have never actually provided scriptural support for Saturday keeping uh, or scriptural proof that the Lunar Sabbath is wrong. Well, the truth may have remained buried forever, but when heaven decides the time has come for truth to go forth, none can hide it or stop it, even though the 1938 and a later recommissioned 1995 committee were both shut down, other voices outside of Adventism had begun to proclaim the Lunar Sabbath. The truth is, Saturday is not the Biblical Sabbath. And all who desire to know the truth must study for themselves. They must decide for themselves. So don't rely on any church or committee to decide for you. Uh, this is an individual decision, and no one can study for you or choose for you. As uh, Timothy said, uh, 2 Timothy 2.15, he says, Study to show yourself approved unto Yah, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 
So when a man who is honestly mistaken hears the truth, he will either quit being mistaken or cease to be honest. Here's a quote uh, by Martin Luther King Jr. Cowardice asked the question, is it safe? Expediency asked the question, is it politic? Vanity asked the question, is it popular? But conscience asked the question, is it right? And there comes a time when mum one must take a position that it is neither safe nor politic, nor popular, but one must take it simply because it is right. So true. So, so true, yes. And uh, we're thankful to present this to you today, and we uh, um, ask you to go to our website to access more information about the continuous weekly cycle, that it is false and you can't find Saturday in the Bible, uh, please uh, go to our website, lunarsabbathday.com. And thank you for being here today and joining us.